<laughs> everybody i'm sandy duncan sitting with my genius genius rescue medium friends michael lamport edna dargy allison winrider and jackie dennison hi everybody hey, hi. 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 as they say here we go again um very excited for this one um aurora saint andrews road quite an investigation here i cannot recall maybe you can help me a different episode where it was so connected to the land and coupled with uh, a couple of caretakers that um, were there to to lend a hand in the rescue yeah 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 it was it was different on many uh for many different reasons i think mainly because we ended up doing the complete rescue outside we did we did yeah. a bit scary yeah. Because we, we felt we were being surrounded by people. I can see shapes of through there. different people. Yeah. It's like they're surrounding us. Anything at night, I find, is scary. I, I think Rescue Mediums did a phenomenal job of making basements and the outside <laughs> scary, um, whether it was daytime outside or nighttime outside, but in particular nighttime. And Alison, I, I believe that um, you had seen a, a spirit in the trees and then you know, you both, Jackie, were sensing that you were being surrounded, as Allison just said, uh, but mostly by, by helpers, correct? To help oh. yeah. Jackie saw someone yeah. in the trees. She said, there's somebody over there in the trees. And when I looked, I could see him as well. I'm sure there's a man in those trees. I there. can see it. <sighs> Through there. Yeah. yeah. A spirit is witnessed. A psychic chase ensues. And then the weirdest thing was, I, I grabbed hold of Jackie, I tend to do that a lot, <laughs> and um, <laughs> felt like it had been, I heard this like whizzing noise <laughs> past my ear, thinking that it was a bee or something, but there was nothing there. Oh, what? No, was that a bee? Something buzzed past no. my head. It just sort of went, do you know, like it skimmed me hair. Realised only much later on, once we knew what had happened, that it would have been a bullet, a mm. bullet flying through the air. We've got the names James and William. James and William. William James Wellwood was the couple's ninth child. While serving his country in the First World War, his young life was cut short at the age of 21. Picking it banging. Mm. I know. Killed in action at Passchendaele. So yeah. there, was, there was a lot going on, wasn't there, Jackie? With, with there the was. Whole yeah, and I think um, what, what I really love about how Alison and I work together is how we, we come at things from completely different angles uh, and, and then it, it sort of starts to slot in. Sometimes we're right in the same moment, experiencing the same thing, and that's what happened when we were outside on this occasion, where both of us, I think, s almost said at the same time, they're surrounding us. Yes. You know, and, yeah. and we, we were both looking around going, they're, they're everywhere, they're surrounding us. And at that point, we didn't know who they were. You know, who, who are these uh, spirits that are there? But even the crew felt spooked. They felt spooked. They told us afterwards that they felt mm -hmm. as though they wanted, you know, the cameras like that, but they were aware of something behind them, right? They could feel some, you know, kind of energy there as well. So, And then we've heard in, in other behind the scenes how you kept up with headphones on and writing down everything that was said. When you were then sort of challenged to go outside, how did your process change or, or did it? It was no different. I would just keep out of the camera sight lines. Sometimes it was a little harder when the, um, if Jackie and Allison had to move really quickly and turn around and move here and there, I had to, um, it was interesting. I had to be aware of where they were to be out of the camera sight lines. And it, I remember maybe at this place or some other places outside, one of the, um, uh, stage crew would actually guide me because I, I was busy writing. I wasn't looking to see where they were running. So they would just kind of motion, push me in the right direction. So I'd be out of the, out of the way. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't think the 
crew, the camera crew were as thrilled to be outside with me there because <laughs> I could be the challenge, I think, of getting in the way. And you were writing in the dark. Um, well, I, I'd actually attach a little tiny wee flashlight or a headlight just oh. focused on where where I was. Again, trying not to distract from from everything else going on. Wow. Incredible. And also lots of noises as well. Mm. You know, you, you could hear the male spirit sort of like stomping behind you at one point. Mm. And then we both heard something above us. And then what was that noise as we were talking? What was that noise? Was it the window shutter going up or something? And we both grabbed hold of each other and screamed. No, it was like, no I'll tell you what that was. It was the picture that fell on the floor. It. Somebody's tapping me on my shoulder. It was like if tap, 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 tap. That's when I was in that other room and I felt somebody's like, so loud. like that, as if somebody had put the arm. <laughs> No way, tell me that didn't happen. That is a clue, because that's showing us the outside and it's it showing is. us the trees, There's isn't it? Definite links to outside. Side. It's like they're going, oh God, these girls are so sick. <laughs> we're trying to tell them, they're not listening to a yeah. word we're saying. Okay, so let's make it very obvious. And the painting just literally, we were nowhere near it, just fell on the floor. Yeah, and that's how spirit helps sometimes. You know, if you're really not getting it, or you're yeah. not getting it quick enough, then they will step home, won't they, Jackie, and sort of really help. Yeah. And, you know, and it was exactly where we needed to be. They yeah. knew that, you know? Yeah. So. But you had that in the premonitions as well, um, about a garden and uh, awards being won. So the grounds were already included before you even started. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. That was really interesting because we couldn't, we sort of made sense of it at the beginning and we started off with the uh, premonitions uh, to the homeowners and we talked about a prize uh, for the garden. Uh, somebody had won a prize for the gardening and yeah. uh, Lily had said about, you know, she's taken a, a great pride in the garden. We'd also got Austria in, you did. in the premonition it was only the show and tell when everything Edna brought all of the research material together mm -hmm. the guy it had a huge part, uh, impact on who the helpers were yeah mm. absolutely we came across an elderly couple who were absolutely lovely but who are the caretaker spirits that assisted with the rescue and why are they so connected to this residence Jackie and Alison believe their true identity was first revealed in these three premonitions. A creative person, Austria, and a gardener. Now, the people who built this house met in Austria. He was an actor and she was a singer. So I think you know who this couple mm -hmm. are. In 1958, Ben and Ida Mikwalski purchased the land once owned by Agnes and John Wellwood. Here, they built the house in which the homeowner currently resides. Ida planted this lovely garden you have now. We actually felt there was prizes that could have been... I'm getting chills, just as you're talking about gardens and stuff. She actually won an award for the tree. Largest tamaracks. Largest tamarack. We've got those tamaracks out there. Yeah. One part that got me at the beginning was when, and Michael and Edna, you may remember this maybe from your interview with the homeowner, but he said he heard keys in the lock. Yeah, I, I remember him. I do remember him saying that. that and uh, it came up later uh, with Jackie and Alison where, where they, they said that. Waking around 4 a.m. and hearing strange noises in the room. Oh. Four o'clock in the morning, I literally hear a key going into the door. Nobody's there. It's the people that they bought the house from. Um, had uh i i think the owner once said or, or said something to them i'm going to give you a set of keys uh when they were alive so that they could come in and check on the house or something i, I may be mm -hmm. misremembering mm -hmm. and so uh maybe he didn't while they were still alive but they he did after they passed <laughs> yeah amazing. just amazing <laughs> well they were like grandparents to oh. us they were desperately trying to get help for you because they care so much about you all. But he was so homesick. They tried to buy it back 
and they started coming around. We, we gave them the house keys because if we weren't home, they could. Mm -hmm. That's who you've heard. Oh. I literally hear a key going into the door. Of a life. Really. But it, I, I found it amazing too, and I, I know I often say that say this on this show, um, uh, uh, that he, he he was a very empathetic and um, wonderful guy, or is sorry, uh, uh, empathetic and wonderful guy, because often, sadly, it's often the men that are the most skeptical um, out of the two sexes, and uh, he certainly wasn't skeptical. Yeah. He, he was really immersed in it. Didn't he say something, Michael, at the beginning, like, you know, if there isn't anything, if, you know, that we are experiencing this, but if they don't find anything, then I think we go and Guga or something like that. You yes, know, the lead yes. in the plot. I, ca I can't remember exactly. No, it, it was it something like that, yeah. yeah. If there's nothing here, I guess the whole family is wacko then. <laughs> It was a little bit confusing though, Sandy, because we didn't know when we first connected, we connected with a variety of different energies there. So with the, the, the husband and wife who needed help, but then the husband and wife who were the caretaker helpers as well. So it, it was trying to differentiate between the energies. And I know when we were down in the basement, um, we we encountered both. So I felt as though um, I had, uh, a, I was connected with a gentleman who'd had a stroke. John died here on this property at the age of 84. He had a stroke. I think I've got a stroke condition with him. Um, mm -hmm. And then I connected with a, a, a completely different character um, with a lady who was making the beds and looking after you know, looking after the place. It was a completely different feel. And pleasant. Yeah. I've just got a lady who's going, come on now, let's get tidied up. And she's tidying everywhere up and she's straightening all the beds. Those aren't straight. Let's go and put those straight. Oh, oh she's very listen, familiar. When I've watched the episode back, I want to ask uh, Michael and Edna this question. Were you two playing the parts of the caretaker couple in, you know, when we reenact uh, uh, everything. So the viewers get to see what we're seeing in our minds here. Um, because it, it looked very like you, Edna, straightening those covers and tidying up. <laughs> was it? Was it you two? Do you remember, Michael? I, I know I was one of the caretakers, yes. I heard it. Somebody else, isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. These are a couple, aren't they? Very a, much an older so. couple. They're looking after it. Yeah, carer. Yeah. A care, like a caretaker. But that couple definitely don't need help now. We're used to being, just so the viewers know, and I think we've said this before, is that um, the recreations of uh, what Jackie and Alice will see are added in, in the uh, edit. And they are simply to give the viewer a visual concept of what Jackie and or Alison may be seeing in their own head. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, it, it, obviously it's a reenactment. It's, I, it's fantastic. Uh, the, the way that's done is just yeah. phenomenal. You know, absolutely. And also another aspect, because you, you were picking up on the stroke, it was obviously him, a woman, I heard a woman screaming. And it was a woman screaming. Really? Yeah. The troubled female spirit disappears. And I saw a baby in someone's arms that just flopped. So it's obviously a baby who died. Yeah. So these must have been all the things that were going, you know, that stopped them going to the light. Because What kept this loving couple from entering the light? One of their children was called Lavina. She died when she was only a little baby. Somebody's bouncing a baby on the knee. Born on June the 10th, 1884, Lavina Wellwood was the couple's fifth child. Tragically, she passed when she was only three months of age. Unfortunately, this was not the only tragedy awaiting Agnes. Son, didn't their, yeah. didn't their son die? Um, yeah, in the war. In the battle, yeah. very young as well. So they had yeah. that, and I think that's who you 
I think that's who had the boots on that you said was marching behind you. So yeah. there was so much, so much trauma in that family. Mm. You know, I remember uh, something horrific happening when we were we were outside and connecting with with both the female and the male with with the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wellwood and trying to get them to tell their story. And, and I had that image of um, I could hear like bangs and noises and yeah. and saw this man. And then I saw blood running down the side of your face. It was horrific. I can hear banging. I've just seen somebody falling. Oh my God. Oh, I've just seen blood all over your face. As if something was coming from here all down that side. The ladies receive scenes from a tragic death. James. And William. Do you know when somebody says that to you? That's really <laughs> what you want to hear. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you I mean, can see the shock on my face. It, it, I can see blood rolling down <laughs> your face and I'm like, I can't remember what I... I think they cut out what I said. Probably swore. <laughs> I was thinking, oh my God, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. Like, well, that's how visual they were. That's how yeah, visual absolutely. they You know, yeah, they, they, you're seeing it here in your mind's eye, but you, because most of the time we have our eyes closed when we're doing that. But yeah. when you open your eyes, your physical sight also connects with your third eye. And yeah. so you can see the scene in front of your eyes. It's like having a daydream. Really, yes. and I could physically yeah. see that on Alison's face, even though mm. she there was no blood on her face. It was like, oh, yeah, my God. <laughs> yeah. you saw it because that's what they wanted you to see because it helps yeah. us to piece the story together. together. And it's it's a good way that you've explained to anyone watching this as to how we get the information. And it, it just comes so naturally. But this was there was so much going on. This was really, really hard to sort of piece it together. You know, yeah. and it won't. It's a good job, Alison, that you, that as the crew, part of the crew and the observers, that you didn't have blood on your face because um, I think we'd left the first aid kit in the van. <laughs> I'd have been running after you if I physically felt it. If I, <laughs> I'd be in the van with you. <laughs> <laughs> What's very curious here, though, is I, I pulled up my transcript of that spot mm. where Jackie, you said, don't know if he is or knows he's dying. And it's a slow death. And it's like, see blood all over your face. And then I've got written down, printed laughter. So oh. someone was, mm. one of you was laughing. And then I, I had. I was laugh. probably laughing at Alison's expression on her face. Probably. <laughs> probably, um, probably a probably shocked expression on my face. Yeah. Explain head there and there, fallen and hit head. And Alison, he was grief stricken. And Jackie, not sure, in sort of blackness like hole with him. Something, something with this leg. I'm shaking with it feel odd, morbid, feeling rigor mortis set in. I'm weakened with it. I'm really so weak with it. That's like a stroke, isn't it? I'm feeling the rigor mortis set in. I love these um, behind the scenes because it, it reminds, you know, Edna reminds us of what we've said. And then sometimes Edna comes up with surprises. If we did, we do another rescue or anything, Edna, on this one. Well, you. <laughs> <laughs> We're all doing all, this. We're all leaning almost. in. Almost the potential was there. You you went back into the house, um, where there was the mirror. Mirrors seemed to play out, and um, Jackie, you noted that, that this is where Allison had seen the little girl, and the little girl. Um, was holding your hand, I used your pain in the left hand, Alison. Oh. Um, let's see. Oh, and Alison, you saw the little girl, she had a hat on with ribbons, was pulling it down and laughing. She's funny and seems happy. Oh. I like playing around trees, she said. Oh, oh interesting. So I wonder who she was then. She's laughing. Oh my God, she knew him and her who we just rescued. 
Do you think it was the baby? Family? Do you think it might have been, because it was a girl that, the, the baby was a girl, wasn't it? That's right, it was Lavina. I wonder, because they do grow in, yes, in they do. spirits. So I wonder yeah. if she's come forward to help her yeah. parents. Yeah. Oh, I've gone all shivery. <laughs> shivers down I don't the spine. That, Edna. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, shivers down the spine. I don't remember that. Do and, you she, and then you said she's twirled around and led us to the mirror to help. And then she disappeared. She guided us to the area. She's so happy. And she's gone back saying boo around the trees, playing with us. <laughs> she's that's okay. amazing. Wow. I bet that's who that little girl was, you know. Yeah. 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 Wow. Because that's, that's the mirrors so were very important. Um, on the trees. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't remember uh, how it all sort of fitted in, but we could see. Yeah. See, I think I think I saw saw someone looking in a mirror, and then we, I think like simultaneously we said he can't see her, so we'll get her to stand behind him, get him to look in the mirror, so he could see her reflection. I can see him looking in a mirror. Let's get her to stand behind, behind him. him, so he'll see a reflection as well as his right. own. Right. Okay. Yes, he's seen her. Oh, he's turning round now. She's stroking his hair. Oh. I'm ready. You know, when Edna comes up with like things that we don't remember and little surprises like that, that's why yeah. this is so good, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, Ooh. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, the funny thing about the lights, seeing the lights, because um, I could see like lots of, I saw the lady and I saw lots of lights everywhere. It's like, Spirit were lighting the whole place up for us. Yeah, so we big see big it. I've got flashes of light. I can see this woman stood there and these lights are going like that all around her. Yeah. And she's going like this. It's I'm almost like around. it's a panic. Wet light. The caretaker couple earlier met materialize. The shine and the light for her. The help in her. Jackie and Alison sense this couple is using their own spiritual energy to assist with the rescue. Oh, isn't that oh, lovely? Of course, we're looking with psychic vision and the camera crew are in front of us and the sound obviously in front of us and uh, Michael uh, is there and Gregory, the director, and Edna uh, are all there. And we're sort of looking right through them at all of these lights that were going on all around, because mm. you, you're totally oblivious of the crew there, because it's mm -hmm. such a tight team that you mm -hmm. become, you know, everybody has their own job and, and no one oversteps the mark with anyone else. So we were sort of like looking directly at them, but looking beyond them, looking through them almost like mm -hmm. they were the ghosts there and we were seeing what was there in a different time frame. It's really... I, I think that's why it's so good that um, because of... And we keep emphasizing it, and I will co continuously emphasize this, the reality of the series uh, in that uh, as the crew, we, I cannot remember any time in all of the episodes where we have stopped you during a rescue mm. where you often see, you know, like as an actor, if you're an actor and you do something like, Okay, let's just get one more take of that. Or one more take, you know, and, and then that's what, but we, we don't have that privilege uh, mm -hmm. as the editors nor the producers. No. And I think that's part of the magic of Rescue Mediums in it's that amazing. you guys are so amazing and the camera crew is so amazing too at just, just following your lead and, and capturing whatever they can on the camera. Because yes. it's so real. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a fantastic show. One of the things that I never fail to sort of surprise me, and I remember saying this to Jackie way, way back before I, I, I knew that I'd been chosen by the network for the show. Um, and obviously I'd watched a couple of the episodes, earlier episodes. But I remember Jackie saying to me, so, you know, we, we do our premonitions, we do our pre premonitions separately, then we read them to each other, then we read them to um, the homeowners. 
And I remember, I remember saying to you, well, you must know where you're going. And, you know, you must know where you're going. Don't tell me that you've got to. And she said, no, honestly, we have to like solely rely on our spirit helpers, our spirit team to give us clues as to what's going on. And then we're driven to the property, wherever it is. And then we just have to get on with it. And I remember thinking, have I done the right thing by accepting this? <laughs> and I remember sort of having like, yeah, sort of like flutters on the plane going, thinking, oh my God, <laughs> you know. Um, and But, you know, you soon get into it because, of course, my spirit team were getting me ready for this. So I had to sort of um, learn very, very quickly and sort of slot in. And I remember, Jackie, you turning me around a few times because I was facing the wrong way with the cameras and stuff. But then eventually, with practice, it just becomes second nature, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. But God, I'll never forget that. Never forget it. So if anybody thinks that we really know where we're going, then we absolutely 100% don't. Um, but I love that we don't. I just love it. Yeah, it, it's, 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 and it's, so much, it's so much fun for us on the other side, too, because Edna and I know exactly where you're going because obviously we've interviewed the homeowners and yeah. everything like that and um we've also at that point we you, you still have no idea no idea at all until mm -hmm. if i drive you until you get dropped off in the car and then we arrange your arrival yeah. um and uh what I, what i find really uh, funny about it and what's fun for me anyway is watching your two reactions to what you have in premonitions that myself and someone like Edna already know. And it's sort of like, okay, look, watch, watch them when they go up to the house. And they had that premonition, I'm making this part up, I had that premonition about the, the garden gnome and it's there, watch their reaction. <laughs> and it's so much fun to see that in your faces because we know what you're we don't know what you're going to see obviously but we know what you're going to physically see and uh it's so it's so wonderful to be uh to have that knowledge from my point of view and and to see your reaction to it so in a way like the the the, the show is fun like that to make as well it, it's but I mean, the main thrust of it, of course, is is uh, helping spirit into the light, which is, you know, the the most important thing. It was good, too, because right, Michael, just as you said, the thrust of it was to send spirit into the light. But the maybe the, the twin engine part of the thrust was giving the homeowners a voice so mm. they didn't think they were going crazy and giving spirit a voice. That's a really good point. Crossed over. Mm. Yeah. We had uh, a unique cheers, um, as Michael yes. was saying. I remember uh, the pun now at the end, which, uh, I mean, it, it was pretty corny, but uh, I thought it was funny. Wasn't it a lovely rescue? That. It was stunning. And this picture falling off the wall. I know. There were so many spirits in the trees, weren't there? But at least we know they were good. How do you know they were good? Because, Jackie, good things always come in threes. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of fun we have. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm not sure whether this appeared in the show or not now. Oh. The show and the photo of Ben and Ida. Oh. No. I'm not okay, aware. there might not have been room for that, but here's a picture of them in, sitting on the prop. Have I got it there? Oh, no, there see it. It. I can see it now. Oh, wow. Oh, With the I trees behind them. them. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. No, I didn't like... make it into the show. Didn't make it in. And oh, yeah. I absolutely think that it was that couple or her who had brought that picture off the wall by saying, look, oh, outside the trees, the trees are important. Definitely you know? them that's, that's done that, definitely. Yeah.
We yeah. just couldn't see the wood for the trees, though, could we? We couldn't, but eventually we did see the light. <laughs> God, we're on a roll, aren't we? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, and we were barking, up, we were barking <laughs> on the wrong <laughs> Sorry, I'll you're, going out, you're going out on a limb now, Alison. Oh. <laughs> well, I knew she tweaked to it sometime. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, um, if, 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 if we um, end our show uh, behind the scenes here now and we do a cheers, yeah. um, we won't do any more puns about trees because I think the viewers will be sycamore puns. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> So are we having a cheers? Oh, we are having a cheers. Cheers, everyone. Michael, for that one. Cheers, Cheers If you enjoyed watching behind the scenes, please like, share and subscribe to VeryParanormal.com, the portal for everything paranormal, where you can watch every episode of Behind the Scenes and every episode of Rescue Mediums, plus so much more. And it's absolutely free. <laughs> you can't get much better than that. Cheers. <laughs>